Welcome everybody back to the channel and you guys today I have the two-piece Z1 Motorsport brake kit upgrade install for you guys now it's not more of a DIY project it's mostly a review so what I'm gonna do is put the brakes on and then give you guys a road test and um, kind of talk about the difference that I feel over the stock system and maybe some figures I'll throw out there but um, here is the rear kit has the bigger hub in there and here are the fronts I'm going to be using Hawk Performance brake pads all the way around. Um, my choice for these is simply because they are low dust and they've stopped gray in the past. I've always used those and they've never failed me. So um, yeah, we're going to see what happens. Now these two piece rotors, they save 10 pounds of unsprung weight on each corner in the front and 5 pounds in the rear for a total weight reduction of unsprung weight of 30 pounds now I've never had two-piece rotors on any car before so I'm um, maybe I'm in for a surprise here but nonetheless I'm gonna give you guys a good thorough drive review my thoughts um, what I feel as a car as I'm driving through through my daily routine daily um, pulls that I you do in the car and see what the difference is now I'm still in the stock wheels for right now I will be putting on my lightweight wheels maybe for the review but I'll keep you guys posted but nonetheless um, yeah the brake job should be fairly simple and straightforward so I'm gonna film a couple of shots um, one the rotors on the car so you guys can see what they look like and uh, we'll go from there so let's get this install going now guys I know I said I was gonna make this a DIY but it's really not a DIY because I'm not showing you guys how I did every single step but more so giving you guys some tips on how to execute your brake swap and some pointers that you guys might want to see if you decide to do this yourself based on my experience if you have something else to add feel free to comment it but other than that enjoy the video now if you guys get the sprinkle ones like I did uh, make sure you guys look at the box for the uh, correct side rotor and don't make that mistake of putting them on the wrong side because ultimately these all vent ventilated and you want to make sure that the uh, ventilation uh, openings are on the correct side this is my front left rotor and I can already see why I'm having so many issues I just touched it um, out with my finger and I can feel physically feel the grooves in the actual rotor itself I'm at 14,000 miles now and this is going to be my second set of factory rotors so enough is enough the first set got warranted out by the dealership thank God because uh, I don't feel like replacing rotors at 6,000 miles but here we are at 14,000 same problem so it's obviously time for an upgrade so let's go ahead and get that going but uh these rotors don't look in that good of a shape and they definitely don't feel like it quick tip guys and you don't have to do this um, you notice when you take off your pads there's gonna be a lot of grime and dust and stuff in there grab a wire brush and completely clean that off before you retract the pistons so that your boots do not retract or any of that stuff back into the boot also guys keep in mind brake fluid is really bad for paint so be careful not to spray it on any of the uh, caliper paint, uh, paint surface so you don't ruin any of that but I got my boots and my um, pistons pretty clean all the way around um, it looks dirty but it, you know it's really actually clean in there so I'm gonna go ahead and retract those uh, pistons this is probably one of my favorite tools in the garage and it's the piston retract tool and it fits perfectly inside of my uh, front calipers so um, if I can find the link for it I'll link it to you guys in the description but uh, it's a definitely a must-have no c-clamp job over here guys make sure you use the proper tools to retract these pistons so you don't have any issues in the long run and here are the pads guys um, they actually were wearing pretty even uh, I know some people have said that the inner on these cars wears um, faster than the outer but they're pretty even all around um, there's definitely some there's some spots here I definitely don't like how they were wearing, but other than that, I mean, this pretty normal wear and tear on the car. So uh, we're going to go ahead and clean up all these pieces and um, put the correct lubricants and all these so they, I don't have any of those squeal noises and uh, finish up with this front end. Before putting these slider uh, pins back in on that plating that goes in front of the caliper, make sure you guys clean them off really well and also apply a small amount of that uh, grease that comes with the brake pads or whatever brand you have, like I said. And uh, just to kind of keep that squealing down, these calipers are notorious for squealing, especially in cold weather and reversing. So make sure you uh, get these all well looped up before you put them back in. So another important tip for you guys, whenever you're putting your brake pads back in, um, make sure this is a, goes on the inner pad on the bottom. This is the uh, indicator when your pads are actually wearing low. And uh, whenever you're applying your grease, that it actually goes in a circular pattern um, where the piston is actually going to touch. But don't try to overdo it. It doesn't need that much. Just make sure you cover the area where the piston is touching so that you don't have any of those squealing noises. And uh, you also want to cover the uh, corners where the pads slide in all the way around on these four corners. The, uh, this uh, brakes, brake pads are actually going to slide on right in those corners. So just make sure you add a small dab on there as well. And uh, this stuff is pretty good. That comes from the Hawk brake pads. So unless you have like a different brand, you can use that. But other than that, that should be pretty good. Just to give you guys an example where I put the uh, 
actual grease in as those four corners. So uh, just another tip for you guys. Make sure everything is put back together the way you found it. And very important, make sure you guys want to put these clips back in to hold in those pins. There's a hole on each of those slider pins and there's a clip at the end that you can take out with some pliers. But make sure you put that back in. Very important. And there's also one on the bottom. Well, we just wrapped up the front driver's side. Now I'm going to swap out the uh, passenger side off camera and then we're going to move on to the rears. But for the most part, that is all set and uh, it's looking pretty good. I like these so far. Quick side note, on the passenger side, on the front, the inside pad that has the indicator for when your pads get low is actually going to be at the top, but on the driver's side, it's going to be on the bottom. So just keep a note of that. All right, guys, the install for the front went really good. Now I'm going to move on to the rears. And uh, same th the same tips that apply to the front apply in the rear. So it shouldn't be that much of a difference, except in the rears, we only have... Um, one piston, uh, one piston on each side, so it's a two pot in the rear. So that's the only difference. And uh, I'll show you guys the same things that I did in the, in the front, just in case you need it for reference. But other than that, let's get to it. All right, guys, here's the rear. This is what it looks like. It's pretty dirty up in there. So we're gonna clean that up just like the fronts. And uh, yeah, it's a two pot, one piston on each side. And uh, don't be afraid to get a, a wire brush in there and get all that grime out and uh, before you uh, put the piston back in there. As I mentioned, you don't want any of that stuff to get in the boot and uh, shorten the life of your boots. Once again, I highly recommend this ratchet tool for your calipers as it helps you push out the pistons really easy without damaging anything. And um, I think I paid like 30 bucks for this, but it's a good quality tool from a refuel, I believe this is a Craftsman brand. Um, there's many brands out there, but I'll definitely give you guys a link to one that uh, you can definitely use in the description. So uh, keep a look out for that. If you guys ever wonder what was behind your uh, rear rotor, well, there it is. Make sure Z1 gets you guys the correct rear rotors. The G37 and the Q50, Q60 share a different hub in the rear. It's not the exact same. The knuckle on the Q50s and Q60 is a little bit wider, so it requires a different part number. So make sure if you guys order that, that they get you the correct rotors. It's happened to a few people, so I just wanted to warn you guys. All right, so we now have the rear rotors on, the calipers back on. I just gotta put the, put the brake pads in, and uh, we're pretty much all done here, so. I couldn't be happier with the way these rotors look. I know there's some ups and downs of um, having some s slots in your rotors that can eat up the pads a little bit quicker. But nonetheless, this was my choice. Um, there's plenty of options out there. You guys can get a flat rotor, a drill, or a slider rotor, I believe. So um, this is my choice. And uh, we're all the result of dropping about 30 pounds of unsprung weight all the way around. I think that result speaks for itself. So. Let's finish this up and put the last pad, brake pads in and uh, go ahead and break these uh, pads in. Once again, uh, just briefly wanted to show you guys what I do to the brake pads. I simply apply um, the lubricant on the flat side of the shim and on the corners where the pads actually slide. Just make sure not to get any of that um, on the actual brake pad itself. Good morning, guys. It's a new day. I was in the garage working pretty late last night, so I didn't get a chance to uh, break the pads in. So we're just gonna follow the hog procedures, and that's simply uh, do six to 10 stops with moderate pressure down to about five miles an hour, but just don't stop the car during this step. After that's complete, you do two to three um, hard pressure stops, um, and that's to a complete stop, but do not drag your brakes. After you come to a complete stop, take your foot off the brake, and uh, once you've done those two steps, then you let the car cool down for 15 minutes, um, not while driving, while the, the car has to be in a complete stop or stationary. So uh, make sure you do that, and after that, your brake pads should be good to use. But you will um, smell some uh, some brakes in that process while it's cooling down. You will possibly see a little bit of smoke coming off your rotors. Don't be alarmed, that's just oils burning off of the rotor from you touching it, maybe a little bit of brake fluid, etc. But other than that, let's get this uh, brake in done, and and I'll get back to you guys in a second. All right guys, the uh, braking of the pads is complete. I'm just letting the brakes finish cooling off and after that we're gonna jump in the car and I'm gonna be able to give you guys all the feedback. I'm sure you guys are gonna ask me questions about these um, two-piece rotors and the brakes, how they handle, how they feel, do they stop better, do they perform better? All those questions, I'm gonna do my best to answer them. But for right now, I'm gonna jump back in the car because it's freezing. Alright guys, so we just got done with our road test and I wanted to give you guys some feedback on what I felt and what I th my final thoughts are on these uh, rotors and um, brakes that I have on right now. So pretty much uh, stopping distance. Let's talk about stopping distance. Um, overall, the car stops a lot sooner, especially just driving around at moderate speeds that you don't have to be speeding or anything, but you can definitely tell a difference. Um, on these heavy uh, factory wheels, it's kind of 
one of those things where you won't notice it as much, but if you pair these rotors up with a light set of wheels, you're definitely going to feel like a night and day difference. But right now, I can definitely feel it, but it's not like a wow factor because I definitely, it, it, they do require those lightweight wheels in order to be the complete package that you really want, uh, where you can feel like a definitely 100% night and day difference. But other than that, it's, I did stops from 60, 100, and the car stopped on a dime. No shaking, no vibration. I felt like I was in control the whole time. No issue whatsoever. Um, great quality part. The brake-in process must have been great because the, um, the pedal feels great. I have no uh, squishy pedal or anything like that. So, um, yeah, overall, the stopping power of these rotors, I would definitely recommend it. Um, I think it's one of those great mods, one of those supporting mods if you're really, you know, trying to get to the next level, trying to be just a little bit quicker uh, and trying to stop a little bit quicker. So uh, it's, it's nothing that you have to do, but uh, I would highly recommend it if you're in this uh, at this stage where you kind of want to get every single tenth out of your quarter mile or just about, you know, the best stopping power that you can possibly get within a certain budget. Now let's talk about the cornering ability um, after getting these rotors installed. So, I went around a few tight twists and turns uh, roads that I'm familiar with, and overall the car felt so much lighter around those corners. It, it actually felt somewhat like an actual sports car. Uh, I remember driving a 240 back in the day, and it felt really light going around corners because it was very well balanced. And these rotors kind of gave me a, just a, a smidge of that feeling um, just driving that car on those twists and turns. So overall, the cornering ability uh, with just the front rotors, and actually the front rotors are cheaper than the rear, so if you guys just want to do the fronts, by all means, go ahead and do that because I think just alone having 20 pounds savings of unsprung weight in the front is a really big improvement over the stock one. So definitely cornering, I definitely recommend it there. Now guys, this is actually my favorite part about these rotors. The fact that they're two-piece rotors, they're rebuildable. So let's say you drive 40, 50,000 miles on these rotors, just hypothetically speaking, and you think it's time for new rotors. So you simply can go to Z1's website and grab the actual disc part for the front end. I believe it's only 300 bucks for the front end and 300 bucks for the rear. Now, if you do the math compared to how much it would cost to replace new rotors, um, even these rotors are actually factory rotors, you're actually saving money. So in the end, it's actually one of those mods where it's gonna pay for itself in the long run. So uh, keep that in mind that these, uh, these rotors are actually rebuildable and you don't have to spend you know another grand or whatever to get a new set uh, you know, 40, 50,000 miles from now. So that's also some, something to keep in mind and that's something I can definitely appreciate from an enthusiast standpoint. All right, guys, so it's time to wrap it up. And uh, overall, if you guys like today's video, go ahead and give it a like. Maybe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.